Love Yours, an experimental podcast. This is episode 11 of Love Yours season 2 with me Charlotte Tahira and this season we are exploring Selena Flavius's Black Girl Finance Let's Talk Money and we're actually on the last chapter before the conclusion and this is chapter 10 assets there's that word again honestly assets is a positive word but for me it's such a triggering word because it forces me to assess what assets I've gained in the 20 plus years it's been since I started making an income through my childhood hustles and honestly not many I think some of the only assets I have are media equipment so cameras uh, laptops microphones um, DJ stuff speakers stuff that like if I added up all the value it's it's still going to be under 2k then there's the odd um, expensive or luxury item I have whether it's gold or leather or a designer purse that my brother bought me still not gonna be raking in the millions so actually when I think of my assets I'd rather think that I just don't have any because if I add up the value of my assets it's quite upsetting But Selena in this chapter shares all the different types of assets that you need to be building on, whether that's bonds, properties, businesses or commodities like gold, wheat or oil. And she actually breaks down in the book the different type of assets you can acquire. And obviously you should have already listed your assets in the activity after chapter three. But just to remind you, assets are resources that have an economic value, things you own and could sell. She lists bonds as the least risky asset because they're backed by HM Treasury and are 100% secure. Effectively, bonds are just lending money to the government and getting an IOU. And with premium bonds, you are entered into a prize draw and if your bonds are picked out, you win some money. Anything from £25 all the way up to a million. You also have the option with bonds to cash out at any time. And massive companies that you probably use regularly like Microsoft or Tesco all issue bonds. Now the other obvious asset is property. Which is a great way to have an additional income if it all goes well. From either monthly rent or from as your property increases over time then when you sell you make a profit but I want to be really honest that obviously this option is for people who are already in a very financially stable position and able to invest in properties you also need to note that if you make a profit when you sell your property especially if it's a buy to let property you'll be liable to pay capital gains tax can find out more about that at moneyadviceservice.org.uk and linked to property is also flipping houses which we see a lot there's so many tv shows all about it like selling sunset or homes under the hammer like there's just a real push for this so the secret to this is buying a rundown property that needs refurbishing upgrading it and then selling it really quickly and the tips that selena gives is to do your research look at house prices in your local area and see if a house is for sale at a bargain price she also talks about commercial property and reits or reits i'm not sure how you pronounce that which is also another option in investing in commercial property and then she goes on to talk about commodities which is the most riskiest option of all because the price goes so up and down so like gold is normally a safe option Whereas oil, for example, is more risky because of the ups and down prices of oil. There's also the option of angel investing. So investing in a startup company, which personally is probably so rewarding, but also there is a risk because it's a startup. There's no guarantees that your money is going to stay the same or bring you a profit. And the last one, she says, is starting a business, starting your own business. Obviously, this isn't for everyone and it's not an easy one to do, but it definitely is a way to invest in your own future and your own flexible financial freedom. But I feel like if you're listening to this podcast, you're probably not at the point 
really investing too heavily in anything. And so I would start with a safe option. And that's what I did. I started with bonds. I don't actually have those bonds anymore because I cashed them in. I had a post office bond and I would put all my tips in it when I was bartending. And it slowly added up to £900, which I then managed to cash out and invest in my laptop so I could expand on my freelance opportunities because I needed an up-to-date laptop for the softwares to be able to freelance. So that was a short-term investment for a long-term goal. I mean, property is, is the dream, as I've mentioned throughout this podcast. It's on the top of my list, but the closest I've come to it is private renting and flipping houses. <laughs> These times I'm just about meeting my monthly bills. So this is Devo, a chapter for a few years time. Once I've increased my savings and my emergency funds, then I can look at my assets. And I think that's the key to this. It's assessing where you are on your financial journey and not feeling pressure to keep up with anyone else on theirs because it's very individual. And it doesn't mean that because this year, all you can do is save an emergency fund and and manage your your month-to-month bills, that next year you won't be able to start accumulating assets. I would definitely take some time out though and look around your house for things that hold value that you probably have overlooked. And you've got to make sure you look after those things. It's kind of like when you get a new toy and like your parent doesn't want you to take it out the box because it's going to get ruined and you can't see the value in keeping it in the box because it's a toy you want to play with. But actually, if I'd hold on to all those Pokemon cards from back in the day, who knows where I'd be now? (laughs) But you should definitely spend some time thinking about your assets and thinking about what direction is realistic for you and safest to go into maybe it is commodities because actually you love gold and so that is an asset you're building maybe it is bonds because you know you can cash that money out whenever you want and it's a safe secure place to invest just make sure before you invest anything you do your research about the risks and the benefits because you have to make a decision based on your own circumstances also your age plays a factor When you're younger, you can definitely take more risk with investments because you won't have as much financial responsibilities and you're further away from your retirement age. Because with assets, longevity tends to be the best. And so you want to make sure that if you're investing in assets, you're not then having to the following year try and exchange them for cash to survive. Considering I didn't really want to talk about assets because it is triggering to really take a look in the mirror at the lack of assets that I have, we're going to wrap up there. I think I did quite well. And we're going to end on a quote from someone who in my lifetime has managed to become financially free and use their passion and skills to become an entrepreneur in many industries. And that is Jay-Z. He said, I'm hungry for knowledge. The whole thing is to learn every day, to get brighter and brighter. That's what the world is about. So even if you can't invest in assets today, do your research. So when you do get that money, that you're ready to start making your money work for you a little bit. Why not? And on that note, let's wrap up this episode. Gosh, I can't believe we're almost there. The next episode is my conclusion, which... I feel like I've given some of my conclusive thoughts away along the line, but we need one final episode to conclude it all. Hope you've enjoyed listening. Don't forget to like, share, follow and subscribe. And I'll see you on the final episode of the season. Love Yours, an experimental podcast 